Hey, what's up? I guess this is my second in this little series of me talking about movies that I really, really like. Last time I spoke about um, my feelings towards Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, which is this really nostalgic film for me. And this time around, I think I'm going for something a little bit different. This time around, I'm going to talk about the opposite spectrum, not something I'm nostalgic towards, but I think is a great film. And because that's because it is, it's Goodfellas. This is one of the, possibly the best films ever. It's definitely in the top of gangster and crime movies. Uh, this is a Martin Scorsese directed film starring Robert De Niro, Ray Liotta and Joe Pesci. And basically follows the kind of rise and then fall of Ray Liotta's Henry Hill. Let's get into why I think this movie is great. Um, it's because it's great. It's a really amazing, amazing film. Um, so, first of all, we have these performances from the three main characters, and they're all practically flawless. There's nothing I can really say negative about these performances. Joe Pesci especially is, you can see his descent from this guy who likes to have a laugh and joke around into complete and utter madness, um, and which eventually, of course, ends up with him dead. His issues that we see early on in the film, when I first played off as a joke, we see get further and further along, and it's all down to Joe Pesci's performance, his constant prattling kind of character that he plays, which constantly talking, constantly got something to say, is done perfectly. Like, you'd feel like it was a real person. you feel like it's all ad -lib. Like, this is how this person is. And the same with Robert De Niro. It's, you can see his character going from Mr. Cool Guy to what he eventually becomes in his paranoia and everything else. And as he ages and grows older and becomes a more mature person, you can kind of see that developed in De Niro's performance. So those are kind of the top two, like, when I was watching the film, those are what the top two came up to me. Like, Ray Liotta is also fantastic as Henry Hill, this guy who is just in love with the gangster lifestyle, but you can see on his face every time he doesn't realise what he's in for. He's not in this life because of certain aspects. There's certain things about this life that he doesn't like, but he likes all the positive attributes, and you can kind of see that. Um, one of the things I really like about this film is there's no hero. Like, through the film, we're told everything through Ray Liotta's narration that we get, Henry Hill's narration, and he kind of recounting things up to a certain point. And, but if, never throughout this film, we follow him as a protagonist, but he's not the hero. There is no hero. He's a womanizing, drug abusing, criminal. And everyone else is, but we follow them because they're the protagonist. And it's one of the few films where you can follow the protagonist who isn't a hero. Um, and I think the film deserves a lot of applause for that. There's no, really not any positive attributes to say about our lead characters. There's not a lot I can say about Goodfellas that hasn't already been said before by other people and better than I can. So I'm going to kind of go into something a little bit more nerdy, which is talking about Scorsese's style with this film. This might be my favourite Scorsese film. And then there's Raging Bull. And I Scorsese did a lot of really great films, and this is him in top form. Um, and I want to give a special shout out to Thelma Schoolbaker, his video, his editor. The editing in this film, it's absolutely astonishing. And this isn't something a lot of people pick up on, but like, this film uses these long, slow takes that really bring out the drama. There's a particular scene I'm thinking of when Karen goes to go see Jimmy, played by De Niro, um, after Henry Hill has got out of prison, and she, he, we're meant to be believing his paranoia that he thinks Jimmy is going to go do something wrong and her paranoia, which is built up by Henry Hill's narration, um, he thinks that Jimmy is going to try and get them killed. And this whole battling of paranoia, no, no trust, and it's all built up. And this scene in which he's like, oh, go get these dresses, they're right down the street. And she goes to look and this, she's constantly looking back, looking at Jimmy and we're meant to believe that this paranoia and that something's going to happen to her and it uses these long takes, these long shots of her and of him and they take a couple of seconds each time and it just it builds up the suspense of like what is he pointing towards the thing, what's going on, it just builds this scene up and it it's done so well and then there are other scenes when the scenes are cut really quick and it's just these really fast takes and there's these freeze frames and it's quite easy pulling every trick he has out of the bag for a fantastic experience. It just tells the story so well. It's it's like I said. There's, there's no nostalgia towards this film. It isn't a film I watched young or anything else. I watched it 
when I was in university studying film and it is just an absolute masterpiece. It's absolutely fantastic. It is truly one of, if not the greatest depiction of the gangster lifestyle on film. Um, I know a lot of people were kind of point towards the Godfather as the example. I don't blame them. I don't want to knock the Godfather, but I think the Godfather exists as a drama. Um, take the crime elements away. That film still works to a certain degree. You can set that in other places, in a, a bunch of pizza places, and it still works to a certain degree. With Goodfellas, the crime element, the gangster element, is in the DNA. The film doesn't work unless these are gangsters, unless it's crime. The entire story, I know it's based on these events and based on this book, but it's in the film's DNA. You need someone like Martin Scorsese to bring his own lifestyle to the film for it to work. It's a high level of filmmaking from everyone involved to high levels of performance and a great story. Uh, we, we watch this guy go from like I said, a little kid who literally just says, they all sit there, no one tells them what to do. So from a little kid who's obviously, we see this kind of abusive father and watching him, obviously he would yearn for this lifestyle where no one would pick on him. And then going into being an adult and having that and having everything. And we have that long tracking shot of him going through this very, very famous tracking shot of him going through the restaurant. And he goes through the kitchen. And everyone says hi to him and he gives money to everyone. And it's just saying everything that we know. It's, ever, it's, the, it's him idealizing his dream. It's him getting what he wants. That's him. He's made it. That's exactly what he wanted to be. Everything after that point is when things start to fall down. We see him, he gets happily married, eh? and then he starts having his girlfriend. And we talk about how his girlfriend night, and essentially it sounds like he's doing it because everyone else does it. And then he goes to prison, and then we get the drug deal, and we have uh, Paulie killing the main man, and all that, and we catch up and just... Again, it, it's another film that I, I, I struggle to really gather my thoughts on what I want to say, because... It's just so good. There's so much to talk about with this film. Um, it's perfectly tense when it needs to be. It's exciting. It's dramatic. It's one of Scorsese's best, if not Scorsese's best. That's a topic I'm going to have to come back to at some point because Scorsese does a lot of great films. But yeah, Goodfellas, 1990, my top pick, 100%. Um, it's hard to really think of a film that's this great. And that's going to be it for this time. Um, like I said, there's not a lot about Goodfellas I can't say that other people haven't said. You should really go check out Goodfellas if you haven't. And if you have, re-watch it because it's pretty great. Uh, that's going to do it for this week. Uh, catch me on Twitter. Check out all the other Blazing Minds content that we have on the website and on the YouTube. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.